Jeff Jonas, Data Maven, IBM. You're concerned in some way about data and personal freedom. You've argued in a blog post entitled Using Transparency as a Mask that transparent society might make us average. What do you mean by that? And what scares you most about our increasingly data-rich society when it comes to individual freedom? Wouldn't it suck if everybody had to be average because they felt everybody was watching? When I wrote that post, you know, I'm thinking, you know, in the old days, if you ruined your name, you could go west. It'd be like, son, go west and reinvent yourself. Well, now we have this long tail behind us. It just goes on and on. You can't, it doesn't get clipped, huh? And, and because the humans are the censors, because everybody's posting everything on Facebook, you were in the picture, they posted it. What's happening is you go to Google and you, you see all this stuff, it's getting obvious to me that more and more things that people might look at and go, well, I wouldn't wish everybody knows that, but now everybody knows that and it's on page one. Huh? So the future, so to some degree, mankind is annotating the world and telling everybody. Huh? I mean, whether it's from WikiLeaks to, to Twitter to Facebook, right? And so what happened, so I was, pon I was pondering this thinking, wow, what future is that? Is the future, well, well since everyone's going to know everything, do I have to be average? Right, everyone's trying to get up under the center of the bell curve, hey, I'm normal. Or is the future going to be where everyone's tolerant of everybody's differences? You know, I mean, maybe somebody's 30 and they love to still color in coloring books. Well, I think that maybe they should be entitled to that. So I'm hoping for a future where diversity is highly tolerated. And, and, and do geolocation services encourage or stifle diversity? Do geolocational services, you know what they do first and foremost is they tend to be irresistible and consumers want them. Why do they want them? Why do we want people to be aware <laughs> yeah, we Well, because everyone wants to know where Starbucks is. You're trying to find your kids. On Foursquare, you're trying to hang out with your friends. So huh? where does Foursquare end? We're only at the beginning of this thing. Oh, we are so at the beginning. I think one of the next big mega trends is going to be the predictions you can do with geolocational data. And I think to the extent... What do you mean predictions? You mean you'll know where people, you what know. they're going to do just by having their data? Well, if you always go to somewhere every afternoon at 4 p.m., if you're on Foursquare, Foursquare knows that. It's going to know where traffic is and isn't at certain times of the day just by how you move. So it's a personal version of Google, a more intelligent version of Google for individuals. Oh, it's going to tailor the kinds of ads you're going to get aren't going to feel like spam. Uh, and Twitter is key to this and Facebook as well. I, I, and I, th I think of those, you know, I think of Facebook as the blue puzzle pieces and Twitter as the green puzzle pieces. And I think as these puzzle pieces converge and you have geolocation data, the, the quality of the things that you're going to be able to predict are going to be extraordinary. At what point are we going to turn around and think, oh my God, this is terrible. These machines know where we are, what we're going to do before we know it ourselves. That's like waking up in the bed that you've made, or we stand there and go, hey, the toothpaste is out of the tube. And that's why I think the obligation, no, really, there's a point. I mean, right. I have this Is whole, the toothpaste out of the tube, though? <clears throat> and, no, we see nothing yet. But I, that's when why I blog. This is, this is why it's like slowly cooking the frog. But this is, about, this is why I blog about responsible innovation, because the reality is if you don't raise awareness, then it's like, it's like um, these free email services, like how many consumers have actually gone and read the terms of use? The terms of use, for example, one of them says, hey, you use our email service, the data's ours. If you leave and delete your account, we got to keep the data. And they're announcing that, which is fine, but we have to get consumers to care. So, part, so one of the trends that I see in privacy is you've got to raise people's interest in caring, but it, what, what really is happening is not that, by the way. Consumers just love it. And I think organizations, and we're seeing organizations doing a better job of this, they're announcing what they're going to do, and then they do it. And you see organizations get published when they announce some, when they don't announce something, they launch it for free. But it's not viewed as being friendly, like it shares your address book with everybody. And then the world kind of rallies against it. So there's a feedback loop there. But isn't there a contradiction in what you're saying? You're saying that consumers should read the fine print. But then your sort of metadata theory is that when you put all these pieces together, we have a world which uh, consumers' preferences and identities and, and actions are going to be foreseeable. But that's not in the fine print. And for a consumer to see that, they can read as much yeah. fine print as they like. They're never so, going to get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So I think one overarching thing, and you know, it's, it's funny, I was so late to the privacy conversation. Like I'd been building systems for maybe 15 years before I even knew the word privacy was a word, right? But over the last maybe seven years, as I spend all these times, I'm on the advisory board of Epic now, I hang out with EFF and ACLU and friends at Center for Democracy and Technology. And one of the ways that I've bubbled all this up is, a main point is, 
You want to avoid consumer surprise. Huh? You want to, when, you, when you create a, uh, a notification about how you're going to use the data, you want to make it a, a, aware to the consumer about what's possible to do with the data, what's computable. And I think, there's, I think more can be done in having consumers realize how much is computable. But I'll tell you one way we're going to see it is the quality of the ads people are going to get. Like when I go to Facebook, my ad is like, are you 46, a triathlete, and want abs like this? I mean, it's very hard not to click that. Huh? I'm looking at it going, I love you. Huh? So the consumer's going to feel it because of the quality of the predictions. You know, no one's going to send me hair care products anymore. <laughs> Coupons for hair care products. So you're saying we shouldn't trust Facebook? No, I didn't say that. What are you saying? I'm saying that the quality as this data comes together, the kinds of things that get presented to you make your life more efficient. The suggestions about who I should, the suggestion about who should be my next friend, I'm like, yeah, I actually appreciate that. This is one of the things that's happening about the future is it's irresistible. <laughs>